So this is what I came up with. Um, you can see here, I have my prime button. Um, my flex hose goes into a quick disconnect in the house, half inch, half inch hose. And here's the choke. Um, with, this, with this carburetor, uh, multi-field carburetor, it seems that I have to have the choke in the middle part choke that would be all the way to run and that would be full choke it seems like it likes just the the middle it might be an adjustment I don't know uh, so I'm gonna go ahead and prime this a little bit there's a button I'm gonna hold it for a couple seconds and then I'm gonna go ahead and pull the starter You guys seen that I had that box that I plugged in outside and essentially that comes in to my breaker box right here see the generator in it's 30 amp circuit I wired it myself 10 gauge wire you can buy the boxes on Amazon uh, I think the call the name is like um, reliance or something like that um, again 30 40 bucks for the box and the connector outside and if you do this though it, it beats running extension cords inside your house and only be able to power a few things but you got to make sure your generator is sized appropriately i don't have a big generator but i make sure i shut off all the big appliances that i don't need off before i power on my generator um, i also since i have a smaller generator is i shut off the big items that'll kick on and surge like the sump pump um, when I when I power it on for the first time, I make sure I have my sump pump off. I have my downstairs refrigerator off. I only have like the main utility lights. And then what I do is I go in and turn the sump on. I hear it run. My sump runs often. I uh, then we'll move on, turn the freezer on, give it a little bit. And what I'm doing is I'm letting that surge wattage um uh, a plateau so things are going to turn on all at different times but when you start this generator up, generator up for the very first time when your power's been off for you know 20 minutes an hour you're going to have your kitchen um, appliance your refrigerator your freezers if you have multiples you're going to have your sump pump all kick on at the same time and you're either going to drop in voltage which is going to hurt some of your electronics or your generator is going to cut off so that's what i do um, again 30 amp circuit is what i do uh, generator in and it's a standard double pole uh, 10 gauge uh, wire uh, double pole breaker and this is called a generator lockout all it does is it's a plate and you buy it based on your panel in your box uh, mine's a siemens but they make them for the other different brands as well and you can even buy custom ones if you have an odd configuration and what it does is it prevents you from running your generator breaker on and utility breaker on your main on what you don't want to do is back feed the line you can injure or hurt a line worker so this makes it code um, because you prevent that you can't have one on with the out the other and they're very cheap 10 20 30 bucks i forget what i paid it's been a couple years now another nice to have not necessary but nice to have i just bought this and hooked it up this morning is a um, same brand as the outside box reliance i think it is um i think i'm uh, saying it right reliance and what this does it's an alarm and what the alarm does you wrap this wire around because there's two wires one ground green one you just connect it to your grounding block in your in your breaker box the white one wraps around the main and that's it um it's got the super ass alarm loud alarm and you, when you're off when your power's off the city power's off you turn the alarm on it's not going to sound until the alarm or till the power comes back on and it tells you when your power's back on instead of 
Something else I do a little different is this generator runs either 110 or 220. There's a switch over here. Not all these champion generators do that, mine does. But even though it does 220, I do 110. But you've probably seen, I, I, run, in my whole hot, my, I run my whole house off of 110. How do I do that? This is what I do. Um, this is an advice, I'm not telling you guys to do that, so don't uh, blame me if you burn up your 220 appliances. Um, but what I do is I have a 110 amp, um, you know, the regular old RV uh, extension cable that I had from my camper. And I made this pigtail. I have a male 30 amp uh, 120 or 110 and I have it going into a 220 so essentially I have the one wire splits off and goes to both sides of the 220 so again one line feeding both lines that are going into the house why do I do this uh, one is the voltage is a little bit more consistent on 110 on this generator than 220 also, I believe, and I could be wrong, you guys leave it in the comments if I'm wrong, so um, also I believe that if it's a 4,000 watt generator, I got 2,000 on one side and 2,000 running on the other side if I run it in 220. But if I run it in 110, I have a straight 4,000. And if you look at your breaker box, it kind of runs in a zigzag. You know, you got half your, half your panel is running off one line and the other half, if you're running on a 110, 120 circuit, the other is running on the others, and 220s just basically bridge the two. Um, what this pigtail gives me is I can feed both sides with 4,000 across the board. So if I have my sump pump and a small air conditioning running, you know, if, if it happened to be on the same side, I could overload that circuit on the generator. Again, I believe that to be true. I don't have, I didn't research it but I thought, I thought I read it somewhere and I'm like an internet engineer, right? So uh, again, this is an advice. I'm just showing you guys what I do and it works out for me. So um, that's pretty much it. Um, the other thing I wanted to cover, I kind of point it to it, is the position of this knob here. I'm gonna get on full on here so you can see a better angle. See how I have that, that angled? For whatever reason, uh, I don't know, but this carburetor, this tri-fuel carburetor kit, when, I, um, when I'm running it, and I do have a, a tachometer here, and it's an hour meter tachometer, really cool and cheap. Um, if you guys have a generator, I recommend getting these. They're like 20 bucks. It just wraps around the spark plug. Um, and you can see that the motor kind of struggles. It's not running as it should. So I was fussing around with the, the carburetor and nothing could, would make it work. And I think it's because I was messing with gasoline settings, but it needed more fuel or less fuel. I don't know, but I just know that when I started playing around with this knob, it would just kind of purr out really nice and steady, nice RPM, smooth. You can't go too much. You can just hear it. If you don't have a tack, listen for it and just kind of move it. If it sounds like it's going to the other the other way, bad meaning bad, turn it back a little bit more. And um, and then the other odd thing is the choke, half choke is where I leave it all the time. It won't run on full choke. It won't run on no choke, half choke, and it starts right up, purrs like a kitten. If you mess with the choke afterwards, it'll stall. If you mess with either side. Before, I had a hell of a time getting this thing started. I uh, traditionally, you know, I'd, I'd choke it. You know, you, you run this thing, you, you, you in a gasoline, you choke it, you start it up, kind of work it until it starts to smooth out, and then you go into the run position, right? And not this tri-fuel carburetor, at least not on my generator. I, uh, I sit there and I pulled it and pulled it and pulled it and pulled it. I gave up, or I was about to give up, play with the choke, so I start playing with mid choke, and um, the thing fired up, and it just ran good from that on. So there might be some settings that I'll continue to look at and see if I can figure it out, but um, I think I kinda got something that's working, and again, 30 bucks for the carburetor. I did have to buy a couple extra things like that, that half inch hose, and you might be able to use 
But um, I bought that a while ago. One thing that is different when you're running uh, propane natural gas, don't just try to hook it up without one of these regulators. Um, this is what stops your fuel from coming in. So when you shut this thing off, this gas still ha or this line still has gas in it, uh, natural gas that is, and this knows that your motor's off and it will stop the flow of fuel. So when your motor, uh, you purge it, it puts um, natural gas in your carburetor, and the vacuum, I'm assuming it's a vacuum, it's drawing from that natural gas, and when that vacuum isn't there, it shuts off the valve, and you're just not spewing natural gas everywhere. Um, so 30 bucks, it came with the carburetor, and you can run gasoline. I haven't tried it. I'm not going to try it. Uh, I guess if you went camping or something, you took this loud ass generator, I don't recommend that. Just piss off everybody around you. Get a Honda or Yamaha or one of those other inverter small ones. To celebrate the end of this project, I figured I'd go pour a drink. Uh, today I'm drinking Eagle Rare. It is a Kentucky straight bourbon. It's a 10 year age bourbon. Really good stuff, guys. Goes for about 30 bucks a bottle here in Michigan. Um, so yeah, let's, uh, let's recap this project. This is my generator. Um, I did some, a couple more modifications, my crappy welding, um, looks like bird shit. But, um, what I did is I took some, um, spare tube I had and I just welded this little piece after I notched it. Just all this buys me is just like a leverage point. Whoa. Shit. God damn it. Fuck me. Fuck. God damn it. Fuck.